Well, do I have a treat for you. You don't want to miss this video, trust me. So what is this all about? Well, a while ago, I received a question to do a video on LODs, also known as level of detail in Maya. Basically, the principle is if you see, let's say, a building close up, you have a bunch of detail. And as you go further away from that building with your camera, then it drops detail to make sure that your system doesn't slow down. That's the principle of it, right? Now, I was going to do a video, but then I thought, hey, my channel sponsor, Urban Studios, this is their bread and butter. This is what they do on a daily basis, and they are absolute pros at this. So I contacted them and I asked my buddy, Matt Bueller, who is the CTO at Urban Studios, would you be willing to do a guest tutorial to basically show what you guys do and how you guys do that? And he said yes. So absolutely cool. So what you're going to see is a guest tutorial done by Matt. He's going to explain the whole process and watch it to the end because I'm sure you're going to love it. Right? Here we go. Hi guys, my name is Matt from Urban Studios and uh, thank you so much Mike for having me on the channel to make this video. So this time we're going to talk about levels of detail in general and uh, also how to implement them in Maya. So let's go for it. Sweet, so let's have a look at, uh, at an actual example. Uh, the, the example here is from our demo executable where we uh, that we are actually shipping to showcase some of our buildings and you can also download this executable uh, for PC using the link in the video description. Cool, so the LOD is at the moment set to uh, automatic, pretty much uh, LOD is distance dependent. So if I'm zooming out, you're not going to see much because we're trying to have as, as good as LOD systems can be. So let's, let's just go in and manually switch the LODs. So let's go to the highest. This is in our case forced to LOD zero. That's the highest one. Then we're switching to the next one. One almost no difference. And I'm switching back and forth. Now you see a little bit of popping, but uh, this is how um, well, we're, well we're, we're trying to have really nice LODs. So let's go to the next one. Uh, and then LOD2, this one here you see a lot less geometric details. Let's go to the next one. LOD3 is just an imposter. And LOD4 is uh, pretty much the side of a building mapped to a billboard. So let's go through it again or four, three, two, one, zero. And if you are combining this in an automatic manner, let's move out. And hopefully we never see a change. So let's move out, 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 out. And at this, this distance, ah, now there, there was a, a significant change there. But you see uh, how it's fading between the LODs. We'll, by the way, talk about this uh, a little bit later on again. Cool. Okay. So let's have a, a look at some statistics. Let's hop over to Excel. Okay. So let's say we are standing here at this position with the V looking in this direction and there's a, a model with 100,000 polygons. So typically with modern graphics cards, this is no problem to visualize in, uh, in real time. Uh, but what happens if you have loads and loads of buildings? In this case, if you sum up all of the, or the, the poly count, it's around 7 million polygons. Now for certain game engines where a lot of action is happening. Uh, this may be a very high poly count. So a good rule of thumb at the moment is to uh, stay with around 5 million polygons that you can see in your in your viewport. Now in Maya, this this will most probably also run fine or or actually fluidly. But because we are talking about level of details, let's uh, visualize the level of detail. So the red buildings are the high quality buildings, full resolution right in the foreground, closest to the camera. 
Then there's the second level of detail, third, fourth, and fifth, where, for example, the, the last buildings only have uh, just one polygon. Now, if you sum this up, there we are around at uh, 1.7 million polygons, and this should run super smooth. Now, there's a little bit of an overhead that once you have an LOD system, uh, you have to actually, whenever the camera position changes, you have to re-evaluate um, uh, the, the LODs for every, for every object that you have in, this, in the scene. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about this later on, so the, the performance overhead of an, of an LOD system. Uh, but yeah, we'll come back to this later on. So let's go to Maya and have a look at some how, how we set up some simple but really concrete examples. Cool. So let's have a look at some examples. So I prepared uh, three example layers here and let's start with the simplest one, example one. Uh, so we have a, a cylinder, a cube and a sphere. And the LOD tools are under the edit menu, LOD here, and let's rip this guy off. Cool. So we have three buttons that we want to talk about. So let's say I'm going to select first the cylinder, then shift select the cube and the sphere and click the button here, create LOD group. Bam. And we have a LOD group successfully generated. So if I'm zooming in and out, we see that it's actually already working. Cool. Now uh, let's quickly talk about the third button here, ungroup LOD group. And if we click this guy, we're back at the same position where we started. So let's redo it. this again. Uh, select cylinder, cube and sphere and create the LOD group. Now there are some settings that you may want to alter. So let's click on the LOD group, control A, go to the attribute editor. And here you see uh, under the threshold type, there are two main types of how the, how the LODs actually um, are evaluated, which one is actually currently displayed. And the first one is distance based. So that's in real world uh, or in, in, in Maya units. So at the moment that's uh, 13 and 25. Uh, but I usually I prefer the second one the percentage, which is actually calculating the, uh, the screen height, or the, the height of the object relative to the entire screen. Uh, so in this case, the settings are 64 and 32. Let's set those to something that is, I don't know, uh, 50 and 10, and zoom in and zoom out. Uh, now, if it's 10%, we see that it switches later now when the object is actually smaller. But I mean, let's go in and go to where it actually switches right here. So this is not exactly 50% of the screen space or of the screen height, right? So uh, it's more like a third. So I'm not perfectly sure why that, e that is, but just go in and fiddle with those numbers. Uh, until you're happy, because that's a, an, I would say, an aesthetic uh, decision anyway. So yeah, let's go and talk about the second example. Okay, second example. Um, for the sake of it, we're just going to start with a sphere here, because the generate LOD meshes um, actually has something to do with the reduce tool that's in here, mesh reduce. So let's have a look at that first. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, but, but this, what this tool does is uh, reduce a mesh poly count. Um, and that's just the, why I'm choosing a sphere is because it, this is very intuitive to, to showcase. So let's delete this guy and create another sphere. Bam. Cool. So let's go into the settings of the generate LOD meshes tool. And here we see that we can 
uh, enter a specific number of LODs that are generated. So one is the original, uh, and then how many more do we want to generate? So in this case, let's say I want to generate two more. One of them will be 45% reduced and the other one will be 90% reduced. So let's uh, just stick to the, to the defaults with the rest and just generate that. And now if we are zooming in and out, we see that actually we have it's a little bit hard to see probably, but um, there we go, there we go, and then there we go. 90% reduction, 45% uh, reduction, so half of the polygons, and then full resolution. Uh, so yeah, this, this actually also seems to work. So let's go to a more, uh, let's say, realistic example that I have prepared with some building. Okay, and now let's go to the third example. Let's clean up the scene here. Now I already prepared uh, for one of the buildings that uh, that we provide. I've prepared some of the groups here. Groups for the LOD zero, LOD one, LOD LOD2 and LOD3. So let's clean this one out also. Cool. Now you see in all of those groups, there's actually different number of meshes inside. Uh, that's, that's the reason in how we're creating those buildings. But let's select the first LOD, second LOD, third and fourth, and click create LOD group. And that's pretty much it. So let's zoom in and out and actually works. Very cool. Now the, the switch between, you see it a little bit here on this AC unit. The switch is very subtle between LOD, uh, the first and the second LOD, but afterwards it's getting much more significant. And then uh, this distance, there's the, uh, the imposter. I didn't include the, the billboard yet. But yeah, then and then what I would do if I want to set this up properly, I'll go in and edit all of the distance or percentages uh, so that the the lots actually switch at the distance that I really want to have. Cool. So that was it for the theory in setting up the stuff in in Maya. There's a last few uh, words that I'm gonna say uh, about something that we. Uh, we mentioned we will get back to and so let's let's get uh, let's get to this okay then there are two last things that uh, are usually related to uh, LOD systems uh, one of them I, I mentioned at the very beginning so I'm zooming in and out of this uh, of the building here and you see this little fading effect the dithering effect that actually is very common in game engines. Um, now this, this effect kind of tries to blend between the LOD systems or between the LODs uh, without a harsh popping. Now depending on how or what the, the form is of your building in this, this case your character, uh, the two LODs may that that are that where you're switching between they may have quite a different silhouette and therefore uh, like a certain LOD popping may be may be very visual and using this dithering effect game engines are trying to uh, to kind of hide um, this this effect other other uh, types of uh, trying to hide this effect is also motion blur or things like that or uh, um, depth of field but the difference between a game engine and in, and in a tool, for example, like Maya or 3ds Max and so on, there you typically don't have to optimize resources so much. Uh, so in, in that case, when you're setting up an LOD system, it's more in a static way and not in this dynamic way as you want to, to have it in a game engine. So that means that um, even if you're animating your camera or, or moving your camera around, uh, that the, the, the LODs are kind of set. So all of the buildings, for example, in the far background, they just have a set LOD. 
Um, and because in an animation you don't want to see popping anywhere, especially in photorealistic animations. Uh, yeah, and so there's there's a little bit of a strategy for your specific project that you that you have to take in mind and when you are setting up LODs and how you're um, how you're instrumentalizing those. Uh, and then there's a, a second point that I want to men, uh, um, want to mention regarding the evaluation of the LODs, especially in real time systems. Now, in this example that we we saw before, we have I don't know a hundred buildings or so, or, or, if, uh, or let's say we have we have a lot of uh, a lot of buildings. Now, for every frame. Uh, that you are that you're displaying on screen uh, and for game engines for example this may be like a hundred times or even higher um, the LOD has to be uh, evaluated for each individual object and um, so the more objects you have the more LOD like <laughs> distance queries or screen space queries you have to to run to actually allow the system to choose the best suited LOD for that specific object. Now, if you have just, let's say, 100 objects, this, this may run really, really smoothly. But what happens if you have, I don't know, 10,000 game objects that, uh, that have uh, an, a, a complex LOD system? There, the system may, may get kind of overloaded a little bit. So uh, that is also something that you have to consider uh, regarding the performance um, of your game models uh, in in use in, in game engines, but usually if you're doing, for example, photorealistic or cartoony renderings uh, or animations in Maya, this is not really, really um, an important point because you don't want to switch between LODs during that animation. Cool. So... I hope that um, you guys have had a great time during this uh, tutorial. I hope you have learned lots and lots about uh, the LODs, uh, or at least to have a great introduction to LODs. Um, yeah, if there are any further questions, uh, ask Mike. I'm sure he can help too. Or send me an email at info at vrbn. Io. So that's info at vrbn.io. Otherwise, um, there's also a link to our uh, homepage and YouTube channel uh, in the video description. Thank you guys so much and have a great day. And thanks again, Mike. Bye bye. <laughs>